someone who has a master's in printmaking and is a practicing artist working in mixed media drawing, painting, sculpture, and ceramics. Her work has been shown in numerous regional and national galleries and exhibitions. She completed her BFA, her MA, and BS for art education from Minnesota State University, Moorhead. She's the first and former director of Native American art programs at Plains Art Museum. She also taught art at Circle of Nations School in Wahpeton, North Dakota, as an artist in residence for the North Dakota Council on the Arts and Fargo Public Schools, and more. Laura has been very busy being an artist and teaching and doing all sorts of, of wonderful things. And we are so blessed to have her here in our gallery and to share her art with us. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Laura Youngberg. Good evening. I'll take this off so I can talk better. Thank you. Uh, large audience here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now I don't forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> well, this is this is a um, a group of work um, that I've done probably in the last um, five or six years. Um, so it's not all brand new, and I have a lot of brand new work, but it's just um, not framed. <laughs> so instead of just putting up with pins, this is what we have today. Um, Thank you all for coming today. Um, I'm glad to be here. And um, my work uses a dress as a symbol and it's become a very, you know, a, a inexhaustible symbol in my work. And it's, you know, when I started using it, I didn't imagine um, that this would continue for as many years as it, as it has, but um, it's based on, um, seen pictures of my grandmother in her first communion dress. And uh, she scratched her face out of all of her pictures, what, whether she was wearing that dress or other dresses as well. And um, I don't know, for those of you that are as old as I am, um, I wasn't allowed to wear dresses or pants to school till I think we were in seventh grade. So all you young ladies here don't know what that was like. <laughs> wearing your pants underneath walking to school in the snow. <laughs> um, so, um, I can hear an echo. Um, a lot of these are titled one size and um, they're a series, I work in series. Facebook about a week or so ago. She's in, she's in Norway, and um, she's from Norway, but lives in um, in Washington State. So um, she does this process of doing a lot of uh, you know layers and um, transparencies, and um, so that's kind of how I got into this particular work. It's working with a, a mono type print in the background. Um, mostly black, although I've done others, uh, the black background and I'm working with black oil is really wonderful in space to get a lot of these real um, ethereal type um, washes in the background, but um, I thoroughly enjoy this process. And my work does not look like hers, but um, I'm sure um, you can see the influence. Um, but um, yeah, um, my work before this in printmaking was, looked a lot different than my drawings and paintings. Um, but once I started working this way, it freed me up so much because originally when I started um, making prints, it's the like, you know, they all have to be exactly the same. And, and that's kind of the traditional prints, um, but with um, monoprints or monotypes, um, 
it doesn't have to be in a um, and so um, it's just a, a process I really enjoy. I uh, end up making a big mess um, and work in stages, starting out with backgrounds and um, and then you know layers and stencils and um, using different materials for stencils. Um, I still have a lot of work that's um, that needs more work as well. So. Um, and I've uh, just moved my studio from, I had a huge space, it was old storefront, um, about 1500 square feet, just on the main floor and I had a basement too, um, into my home. We did do an addition, but it's not quite the same size. So it's been interesting trying to wiggle some of that back in even though I did get rid of a lot of furniture. <laughs> um, so, um, um, the dress itself, as I mentioned, was, you know, about served out with my grandmother, but it also um, this particular style with the bodice and the puff sleeves and the full skirt is um, actually my own first communion dress that I still have and have used in work literally by silk screening it, exposing it to um, like a photo sensitive emulsion and putting the dress, not on the wet stuff, but after it dried and then um, exposing the light to it. And I have some pieces of that, but not in this exhibit. Um, so these are mostly one size. This one is called loose ends. And this was um, particular, the loose ends are 2014 are the ones that I did in Ava's workshop. Some of these are a little bit later, um, 2015. And this is an earlier version as well. But I just love making these little outfits and just kind of letting go and um, just enjoying the process and seeing what the ink will do and you know how it um, spreads with the flash oil. I've been using um, toner and um, alcohol, which works as well. Um, not quite as beautiful as the flash oil, but <laughs> I'd probably be brain dead if I tried it in my own studio. <laughs> You need a really good exhaust system. So um, here's another of, the, of my first communion dress. And as I have that dress and it's like my, the waist is like, I don't know, it looks like it's about eight inches. You know, it's like crazy. <laughs> but it, it was mine and it, and it fit me just fine. <laughs> I do have to say I was probably in first grade or something, no? First or second grade. And here, um, another part of the series called Common Thread, which the, we've titled this exhibit um, under. And um, this one reminds me of like something eternal, um, you know, out in the universe and the stars. And, you know, um, the dress also is very, symbolic of my mother and and her mother, my grandmother's, because um, she used to make all of our clothes and then she taught us to sew and we sewed and made all of our clothes till it's actually more expensive to make your own clothes now than it is to just go buy things, especially on sale. But um, we got a note that the sound is going in and out. So so oh, do our best. To okay, make sure that I will try to talk louder <laughs> and hope, and I hope that will help. Um, so I love that is you know the star people to me, and um, this is a piece. Um, it's also from the one size series, and um, just look at these gorgeous little you know marks that the flash oil creates, and there's even like a dress almost just in the, the way that ink moves under the oil. 
Um, but this one reminds me of when I was a teenager living in San Bernardino, California. That's where my dad, I should mention my dad was in the Air Force and we moved all over the place all the time. So um, we were in San Bernardino at the time. And uh, I just lost a cousin of mine. She's close to my, you know, about the same age I am. And they lived in Santa Monica and she, and we lived in San Bernardino and um, just thinking about her these days as well. So I don't know if you can see the, the stencil, how that's working. You know, I use it as a, a positive and also as a negative. Um, I'm flipping back and forth. Can you still hear me, peoples? <laughs> yep. yep. They're saying the sound is fine now. Oh, good, good, good. And here's a, a fancy show dancer. Um, thinking of the, the modern butterfly, it's still using the pattern pieces, which I, I love using. The pattern paper. Wow. And here's an earlier, the um, 2014, right after the, the workshop with Ava. Um, I just love my little feet here <laughs> and just how loose things got when most, most of the times when I was making prints, they just had to be a lot more precise for some reason. And I, I'm able to just kind of let go. So it's fun and kind of obsessive <laughs> the printmaking, but um, it's, a, it's a great way to work. So, with that, I'm, I'm not sure I have much else to say. Um, I guess I could say too that, you know, with my mom teaching us to sew and then I was sewing and, and I, I used to sew a lot more, but then um, back in the 70s, early 70s, I lived in San Diego and I started working for Ratner's. It's a um, big clothing company that made men's suits and um, mm. it was a sweat factory. And um, that, was, that was quite interesting as well, that situation. They just like, you know, okay, the bell rang and we had to all stand off to the side where they sprayed for fleas. <laughs> it's wow. like 105, no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Irons going all over the place. People speaking a million different languages. And, um, but interesting, except, um, yeah. I had to sew like 2,000 zippers a day at one point and like I did it but then they moved me on to something else that uh, they had little knives coming up and I had like had to, no <laughs> you know it's yeah. like I can't go fast on that machine <laughs> yeah. so um, I still got sidetracked from what I was saying but the, the idea of the dress um, is you know a lot of um, tragic history trying to make people be something they aren't uh, it's kind of the western dominant you know pattern but um mm. but also the the idea of creating clothing and it's as a loving nurturing thing to um you know protect someone and um mm. you know like some of the the regalia and um work outfits, the native outfits, you know, so much time, hundreds and hundreds of hours can go into to a piece with beadwork and, and um, quill work and all, all the sewing and care with that. So um, it's a, a lot of things multi-layered, like you said, and my daughter, Josie made this beautiful little mask for me, even though it's really hard to get on and off my earrings, but <laughs> <laughs> carrying on the tradition, she's been doing a lot of masks. So with that, um, thank you for coming tonight and we'll open it up for questions. Or comments, whatever you would be like.
I have a question yes. to start. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about the tools that you use and how you get some of the marks in, in your work, or um, do you just sort of let it happen? Or are you um, intentionally trying to get some of the, like the hash marks or like this one over here has some sort of bubble um, things happening at the top. And um, you mentioned with the ink. Yep, this is from the flash oil. Uh, that's causing that, but then, you know, I also just come in with a um, a mark, not a marker. I don't know what, like a pencil and okay. and a draw into it, scrape into the ink, um, or like something that doesn't have pencil ink in it. Um, these were stencil. You know, the leaf was laid down. Um, and when you say that, you mean like an actual leaf. Yes. That you would get. Yes. Yeah. And okay. it's a cottonwood leaf. And so, and there's a story of like the cottonwood too about the star boy who came. Um, he was born from the star people. Mm. But it's a long story. So, <laughs> have to do that next time. But um, yeah, the cotton, the cottonwood. Mm. Yeah, your work is beautiful. And as a fiber artist myself, I. I love the the fibrousness of of some of them, of a lot of them, though it's on paper, right? And so mm -hmm. capturing some of those textures and things are are really lovely. And you've, you've done oh, thank you such a good job of, of capturing the the mm -hmm. care, right? Like you mentioned, um, clothing is a way of caring for mm -hmm. for one another, and, and it's like anything that you're making usually is it's like it's prayer like. Yeah, you know, so yeah. yeah. So as a fiber artist, you know the the time that goes into to something kind of any artist. I, I know for myself, I kind of zone out, and, right? Um, get into a, a different space. Um, some of the marks, you, you, the tools I use: Q-tips, um, rags. Um, just like I said, I find I cut out little doll dolls and little dresses and. Um, Use different materials like this is like some some hemp. The the grid paper was like using some hemp. I don't know what you call that stuff, but it's it's um fiber thing that I don't know if you would usually use to weave or make rugs with or something like that. Um, so that's that's what that is. Um, and then the pattern paper itself. But I'm gonna apply that to a sprinkle ink on it, or I've rolled ink up, crumpled them up and rolled ink on them. So they look kind of like trees. I have one of those here, but, um, and lots of different papers. This is just a really lacy like paper. And this is a, a grid paper. I get a little crazy over paper. I have a lot of paper. <laughs> uh -huh. I <So>. get you. <laughs> You know, the pieces have kind of a, a collage-like feeling to them. Yes. Um, and and so I love that you use um, the pattern, uh, pieces of, of patterns that, you know, because I can really relate to that, you know. And, um, mm -hmm. but it's fascinating that, I mean, because you say it's a monoprint. So how are you, how are you getting from the, pattern piece to the print i mean not that i i don't i'm not a printmaker but it's a mixed media mono print so i use the manipul manipulate the ink and i use collage i might print over it again um mm. so and you know this is like just like a, a piece of paper that i drew on um direct drawing method where you ink up a plate, you put the paper down, you draw on it. And so that's a, a, a form of printmaking. And then it's collaged onto to here mm -hmm. as well. Cool. I just have to say one more thing uh, as someone who uh, spent my teenage years at the um, Newberries looking through the stacks of fabric, you know, and imagining what, what could be made out of this. Um, I, that there is, there is a whole um, kind of emotional attachment to, to fabric that, you know, that 
the fabric itself is such a medium, um, you know, color choices mm -hmm. and all of that, um, that, that um, you're, all these pieces kind of bring that memory back. I know what you mean. I just had a flashback to Ratner's when they were, this probably dates me, but you know, all the, the red, yellow, plaid, polyester pantsuits <laughs> men used to wear. We'd get excited. It's like, you know, you do so many zillion of a, a certain color and a new color comes in and yay. <laughs> we did wool too, which always was fun in the summertime. But <laughs> um, yes, and like you don't get that with fast fashion. You know, it's like you get, okay, this is what they selected and you can find some fun stuff, but um, yeah. It's funner making your own. <laughs> right. Sort of removes your choice, right? Mm -hmm. So you just choose out of the choices provided to you. And I really like all that, like everybody hears that, like a handmade mask too, that um, that's kind of a way of expressing yourself. Um, and I do like this, this fabric. I'm not sure where she got it, but. Yeah. Are there other questions online? Hi, Laura. This is this is Kent Kaplinger, and I'm here with Eunice. Hello, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I want to congratulate you on your exhibition here. Uh, it looks great. Um, now, I know you do reflect on your personal history um, with your work and through your work. I was wondering if any uh, current events um, have an impact on, on what you're working on now? Yes, um, I um, retired from the museum um, and with COVID things have just changed, but I was very involved with the MMIW, MMIP, Missing and Murdered Indigenous People. Um, and this, the dress also symbolizes, you know, the missing people because a lot of dresses have no people in them. It's just the dress. And um, so, so a lot of that work, even though it, it might've been done before, it still kind of um, becomes, becomes that. And I have a, um, a niece, Lissa Chase, or Lissa Youngbird, Yellowbird Chase, excuse me. I just did a little piece and, and showed it to her with a, a woman with a, that's just in shadow and I use a lot of torn paper, dyed torn paper. And there's a little yellow bird on this twig right in front of the shadow piece. So mm. um, made me think of the work she does. She's, she's used her retirement money to go out and try to find, you know, uh, some of these people that have been lost and she's been very successful. Um, it's not always, you know, they, they aren't always alive. Um, mostly not, not, but uh, Native women and people of color are still thought of as disposable, you know, not even um, human, subhuman. And with this new, with this administration that hopefully we get out of soon, um, it's just, it just, I'm just appalled that so many people actually voted and really no. support this guy, <laughs> right. you know, that, that there's that many people that just have that much hate for others um, really surprises me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that answered your question, but, but yeah, there are, it is, it is timely and as I'm working, I work through these things that are bothering me. So, you know, I'm sure as an artist, um, we do that too. And congratulations, Kent. I know they just purchased some of your work for at the Plains. So I was excited. <laughs> Thank you. The frog ones, which I want. <laughs> <laughs> He's still got one for you. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> 
does a lot with the environment and some of his frog images like that have like two legs or three legs or you know just because of all the pollution and stuff that's happening and disregard for climate he's our bomb so and and he was an organic farmer and yours as well hey ken <laughs> one of my favorite people <laughs> Wait, what about me? <laughs> and you can't, can't, I don't, I do not want to forget you. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yes, it's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Always. And I also have an exhibit at Rourke in Moorhead. And you can make an appointment to go there if you'd like to see the, the work in person. Because um, they, they schedule people in so that they don't have um, in planes too, you can always go there and um, you don't have to make an appointment, but they are very careful about the, how many people are in at once and disinfecting and all of that, as I'm sure they do right here as well. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Strange times. Laura, I'm wondering if you would talk to us a little bit more about this one. There's there's so many different parts to this one, and I'm wondering if you can help us sort of pick it apart a little bit and, mm -hmm. and explore it. Well, we have another series, and this one kind of blended in with that. Um, there's a series I have called Wooden Indian, and so I have a lot of figures and women You know, I saw I found this paper that, that is um, looks like wood, or wood is printed on it. Um, and so the 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 wooden Indian. So there's a lot of stereotype, you know, coming in and out and over time. And I'm always thinking, like, especially. <clears throat> That's kind of the thing that I think of is like waking up and discovering. And, um, it's not always um, something that's you know really a good discovery, unfortunately. Um, just like the the work that um, my niece Lissa, a great niece, um, my husband Felix's older sister's granddaughter, so doing some amazing work. Um, anything else in there? I just, I just like making up shapes <laughs> too for. Yeah, so these, um, I find these pieces very interesting, right? They look um, back to like the pattern um, sort of theme, right? Like a fabric pattern with the, the dashed lines as if mm -hmm. you're supposed to cut them out or um, I. Or sew them. Yep. Or sew them, yep. Um, and and I thought of doing that. I have another friend, um, Judith, um, that um, that sews into her her work. And I I thought of doing that. It's just kind of lazy, I guess. I just put the string on there and glue it on. <laughs> um, after working at Ratner's, <laughs> right. I right. still have like a, a fabric collection, and you know, it's like, oh, this would make a certain cool thing. And I still buy fabric, unfortunately, that that sits there. But maybe someday. <laughs> Serve a purpose. Lost the sound. Oh, in here you see, but um, I crinkle up the pattern paper and then take ink and run over it to create, you know, it makes these crinkle tree-like things. That's, uh -huh. that's what you see in there. And the, so uh, I just... The cottonwood leaves, are they cottonwood? Yes, they are. I live in um, Breckenridge, Minnesota now, and we have these beautiful cottonwood trees that line the river. Um, Forum engineers came in, cut them all down because they thought 
you know, they build this wall instead to help with flooding. It's like, well, the cottonwood trees are there holding in the soil. They've been there for hundreds of years. And I was just like, oh. And plus then bats in our house after they cut <laughs> We lost the sound again. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's normal uh, Zoom just kind of going yeah, in I and out. I've yeah. done that before. It's like mm -hmm. each word is kind of. We can hear you now. Oh, good. <laughs> We're talking out about Zoom, how um, sometimes the, the sound comes in and out. It's really difficult when it's like someone's actually talking and you're only hearing half of what they're, they're saying. But, um, but yeah, thank goodness for Zoom. <laughs> um, yeah, do, do a lot of Zoom stuff these days. Hi, Laura. It's, it's Naomi Sleeshman. Um, Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, this exhibition is incredible. Um, and thank you so much for talking about your technique and layering and then also about the dress. Um, and it's, it's great to hear that you've been able to move into your new studio at your home. Um, and I know that with retiring as well, um, you've had a lot of changes, especially with COVID as well. <laughs> Um, and, and I'm really excited to hear about like, yes, um, I know you're what, dealing with the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm, I'm, I would love to hear about like what you're working on in your studio now, because you have these two wonderful exhibitions up, which I'm really hoping to make it to the Rourke as well to see that exhibition. Um, and I'm curious um, what you're working on now and what you're planning to be working on um, in the future. Well, right now I'm just trying to wiggle all this stuff in and get it to fit. And I'm slowly getting there. I've um, done some um, wood burning pieces, um, but mostly I'm getting shelves up and sorting, sorting things. And I've discovered I have a, a lot of colored pencils and a lot of paint, <laughs> more than I thought I did, but they were all in little different spots with pockets here and there, but um, that's coming together. So. As um, soon as I get my press kind of like cleared off, because there's a lot of stuff on there, old, you know, work prints and um, books and whatnot, um, I plan to um, start making some more um, monotypes. And um, like I said, too, when I was sorting, putting things away, too, I have so much, so much things, so many pieces that are already started and um, working on those. And the one I talked about a little bit earlier with Lissa um, Yellowbird, I, um, that was from an old piece. I took a, a piece that I had used in a demo in a class and started playing with it. And, and um, I liked working with dyed paper as well. So I was spraying dye all over my new house, <laughs> <laughs> the addition in the house, but um, but yeah, it said I have a laundry sink in my studio and a big tray where I can spray stuff and then a, like a walk-in shower to wash it all off. It just works good. <laughs> Not as great as the NDSU Pairs printmaking studio, but but it's it's mine and it works. So come on over, Naomi. I'll show you. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to seeing um, what you make. This coming year so awesome thank you oh and, and you as well Congrat congratulations on your big commission with the, the little the little feet i really enjoy those yeah thank you thank you laura all right anything anybody have any answers <laughs> 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 or questions but <laughs> I'll take some answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
And then for those of you who are still um, in the room, um, we do have a survey for you to fill out for this event. Um, it is important for us um, for the grants that we write and receive um, and all the money that makes events like these possible. Yes. Um, so please. It just takes a couple still. minutes, folks. Data. Yes. Yeah, so we will go ahead and um, post that in the chat here. Um, it also is available linked in the Facebook event page. Um, if you found us through Facebook, it is in there too. I can also add that to the website later. So um, if there's anyone that you noticed left uh, and didn't get to fill out that survey, do bug them to fill out the survey. <laughs> um, because again, it is really useful to us. It's a really important feedback. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye, Laura.